Really. It's just after dawn at the Senny Bridge training area in Mid Wales, freezing and wet. And these are gunners from Seven Para Royal Horse Artillery. That's a rank equivalent to private. And they're here for a course, of which this is just part, which is preparing them to move up to the next stage, up to the rank of Lance Bombardier. Before we start, has anybody got any injuries? Start. Start. But keeping warm is their first challenge. Yes, sir. OK, well, we're going to go through. Quick warm up. This should help. Nice big circles. This won't. Again, jump in, two footed landing, come out, two footed landing. Everyone happy? Start. Start. Let's do that now. This is the assault course they'll be tackling. And before they try it in anger, guidance and advice from Lance Bombardiers and Bombardiers who've been here and done it before. So basically we're here to overwatch them and keep them motivated. Um, what, what we tend to do is uh, we try to uh, get out of them, sort of uh, try and promote command abilities, uh, leadership abilities. And uh, when we're there motivating them, you'll see the lads, uh, they sort of, uh, that comes out in them. And uh, it's all about getting them to motivate themselves uh, to perform. The assault course for real, each man for himself, but eyes on those who help and inspire others. First challenge, the Smarty Tube. We bring them here to Senny Bridge because the arduous terrain and the unpredictable weather provides a challenge for them that is difficult to uh, mimic elsewhere on other training areas in the UK. Get up there. Some real unique challenges for the guys. Um, it really helps them come together, uh, build their leadership, uh, build their teamwork and their team spirit. As if the assault course wasn't enough, now they're back. They're getting into their sections to do something called the Brecon Mile. And that's all the way up there. With Bergen and Rifort, they begin. It's a very long mile, climbing as it does hundreds of feet, and in fact it's over two miles. We're looking for the blokes to, to display uh, all the qualities we would expect of junior commanders. We're looking for them to uh, search deep inside themselves when it's particularly hard, uh, when it's particularly cold, wet and miserable, uh, to rally themselves, rally those around them and display those qualities uh, of, of courage, um, mental and physical robustness, uh, and ultimately display to us that they are capable of leading soldiers uh, in high stress situations. Not a pass or fail course, but it gives participants and leaders the knowledge to know who's ready and who needs a bit more time. Simpson, let's go. Great termination, Adam. With horizontal rain as we crest the hill, it's too wet for our camera. We follow the last man from inside our van. So it's all a learning curve. I mean, I myself have been through it as well. Uh, obviously, at the time, uh, you're, not, you're not particularly enjoying yourself. Um, but as you, when you come out of it, and uh, obviously you, you learn from the experiences, uh, you come out of it um, definitely a, a better person than you are as a junior leader. Come on! It's nearly over! Good lad. Off the road here. Well done. Right, and that's it. Relax. Get off, relax. Get off, relax. Get off, get you one job. Go, well done. They're soaking and they're freezing. They must get dry.
Well, teamwork doesn't end, now the exercise is finished. Each section is making sure every member's okay, making sure they change into warm clothes, and most importantly, making sure they've got a hot brew inside them, because uh, it's cold. It was an amazing effort. Um, one section, I am I think, came first with my section, so I'm very pleased about that. And um, it was an amazing feeling to know that my section worked hard, and um, we all came through, finished it together. Yeah, that was hard. It's just the ob like, obviously the obstacle crossing, you just, it's just in and out of water, it just takes it out of you, just fatigues you straight away and then you get the element of surprise at the end where I think it's just over two miles but obviously it's all uphill so it's all good. Back to camp for a warm shower. But at Farm 8 in another part of the Sennybridge training area, the exercise staff who run what happens to these gunners are already planning their next challenge. And just a few hours later, they're doing it for real. It's this, a patrol exercise. Every time we do something, whether we go on patrol, whether we do an attack, we appoint them as commanders and they lead themselves. So we have a platoon commander, a platoon sergeant and three section commanders and two IC, second in command of each section. So this time they're going to patrol out under their own platoon commander and platoon sergeants and section commanders. They'll patrol down the road, they'll meet up with the instructor. First they need to clear the open ground and find cover. They head for the trees, but it's been raining solidly for days, the ground's sodden and slippery. As the instructors look on, they begin the task of occupying a harbour. Nothing to do with ships, of course. It's a defensive formation for the platoon. Triangular in shape, it means in essence sentries are posted, they protect the area. And that's what they'll be doing as the sun fades and the temperature drops further. The morning after the long night before, safely out of their harbour and a patrol of a mile or so to begin the next part of the course. Right lads, as we spoke yesterday, today we'll be conducting contact drills, okay? Obviously we went through the theory lesson yesterday, so let's try and get the answers from you. What are we going to do when we're patrolling up in a patrol formation? Right, so basically today we're uh, teaching the lads to drill contact drills. It gives them the ability, if they get contacted while they're conducting uh, reconnaissance patrols, CTR, stuff like that, that they're able to withdraw themselves out of the killing area. Um, and then you'll carry on peeling until you find a suitable rally point. Well, they know the theory. It's time now to see if they can put it into practice. They've split into two groups. This lower group is going to begin first, and they will come into contact. It's how they react when they do that's the key. Contact left! Contact left! Mechanics are there. Uh, obviously, we're getting those those key points out of them, command and control, get those leadership qualities out. Um, so all it is a case of now is just keep going through the drills, repetition, 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 uh, until we get it right. Contact left. Last one. Last one. Compared to what we've been doing, it is one of the more simpler things. Last man. With more physical activities we've done so far as well. So. We are, we are pretty much all knackered, as it is, so. But that's the point of the training, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just see if you can deal with these circumstances under serious pressure and fatigue and, yeah. Some of these guys, you know, when they're at work, they just do what they're told. We're giving them a chance here that they never usually get. And often you don't get chances like this in the civilian world as well. So this is a chance for them to really start pushing their limits. It's really tiring, stressful, so it puts a lot of pressure on you to work at your hardest, well, your best, I suppose. Um, but I'm enjoying it so far. It's good to get um, amongst the lads and stuff again. Stop it! Stop it! The training continues and will do for several more days. A test of resilience designed to find the next generation of junior leaders. <laughs>